So, Doc, people listen to us for nonsense, and we give it to them in spades. Nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. Some would even say, on our best days, malarkey. Braves, defending champs. Boy, it sure would be a shame if there was no season next year and we were just still the defending champs. Also, this guy that got hit, how old is he? Uh, 46. What a loser, just sissy man. You just got punched in the face by a 90-year-old man? Come on, dude. I'll bet Doc is like the Sinbad of Ames, Iowa. Because people, people... I didn't realize. I thought it was just a doc thing with the corn jokes. Iowa people love corn jokes. Well, you know what they say, knee high by July, baby. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that's killing in the Midwest right now. I'm sure when that hits their ears, they're like, that doc, he gets us. Doc, what do I love more than anything? That's right, an angry football team. I prefer to think of Warsaw as like a battle of who's the best saw, right? So you have like a sawzall, you have a skill saw, you have a hacksaw, handsaw. It's just a battle of saws to the death. Welcome to the Spaghetti Junction Boys podcast, coming to you from the CutBet studio in beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. As always, I am your host, William Z. Hildebrand, and I am joined by the debonair Doc Jacobson. Before we get things started here, we want to thank our friends over at Cut. I'm sure you have the same problem as we do, and that it's hard to keep up with all the different bets you've made against your friends. Who's paid, who hasn't, what were the terms, on and on. Well, we came across this cool new app called Cut that formalizes that whole process so that you don't have to check the notes on your phone or scroll endlessly through your group chat. It's essentially a better version of Venmo, but for betting, with interactive features that make it more social. It tracks all your bets, allows you to create your own lines, be a record against your friends, and perhaps most importantly, ensures that you're paid when you win. Go check them out at cut.com or on Twitter or Instagram at cutbet. That's cut, K-U-T-T. So, Doc, I can't go on with this episode without really getting into something that's been weighing hard on me. And that is my intense hatred for the food delivery industry. Now, I I have nothing against like pizza delivery or Chinese delivery. That's, That's part of the fabric of this nation. That's part of what makes us great. You know, you're used to the Domino's being delivered on a Friday night, wonderful. Hey, long day, should we just order in Chinese? Can't beat it, love the little boxes. But, Postmates and DoorDash, and so help me God, Uber Eats, is an abject disaster. I tried, Absolutely. I tried to order two burgers and a thing of fries from Five Guys Burgers and Fries. And, of course, we know, I mean, it's well documented that their prices are a little steep uh, as it pertains to burgers and fries in sort of a um, short-to-go order kind of establishment. But for two burgers and fries to be delivered like three miles to my house, after taxes, fees, of course, they they raised the prices on the menu, was over $40. (laughs) And I know tons of people who swear by these things. And they say, oh, yeah, no, we do Uber Eats four or five times a week. And listen, I'm not saying like I'm – I'm good. I'm not, you know, I'm not struggling for cash in terms of, oh, I, I can't pay the $5 in fees or whatever. But when it comes to what value you're getting out of it, when they raise the prices on the menu and you're paying for the fees and you, you pay the 20% tip for these, these drivers because they're not making a ton because the, the company's eating a ton of that, the delivery company, it's, it's, just, not, it's just not worth it. I mean, you, if I know someone who got food delivered from a mile away. You're there, pick up the food and back in 10 minutes, and it probably saves you $15. Absolutely. Are you, what's well, 10 times six? That's nine. You're essentially saying, oh, $90 an hour, not worth it for me to just sit on my ass. Just get in your car. Or if, if you're in a really urban area, walk. Just go walk and get the food. I don't get it. 
why do people do these things? Are we this lazy? And I realized just how lazy we're getting. And there's a million problems I have with delivery companies and delivery culture. But I realized how lazy people are by good parking spots. You know, people always talk about, ooh, got a good parking spot. Hey, let's go up there, see if there's a good spot near the front. All a good parking spot is, is not walking. <laughs> that is that is how just enormously lazy people are that they think good equals me not getting very minimal cardio. Oh God, I have to walk an extra 20 feet. Why did you park all the way out here? Yeah, and sticking to parking lot etiquette, a uh, deep dive on the YouTube I was telling you about on the pre-show with that carts guy, people not returning carts to the cart corrals. Man, we're going to we're gonna have to do a deep dive on that guy because he is he's a savior to the American people. We need to, we need to talk about him more. Yeah, the carts thing I don't understand, and we will, we will do a show on that. Um, <laughs> we, we, war- we warn the listeners, but uh, – Another thing I don't understand that people do is littering. That that really doesn't make sense to me. Like when I when I'm in an urban area and I see like trash out and about, I, I like to think that it just flew off the trash truck because I've I've seen that happen. But I've also seen people just flat out throw shit out their window. And that's wild to me. I just it's it's like the Ron Burgundy eating the burrito and tossing it out the window. It's just like, oh, I'm done with this drink. Only one place for it to go the street yeah I, I really don't understand littering like that would never enter my mind i i know you see the smokers like always do that and smoking in your car is a wild move but uh i guess there's really nowhere to put it unless you have like a cup with like some liquid in it that you can just toss it into um and i think people toss gum at the window and I, that's not great but that's a little bit different than just like oh done with this wendy's Quarter pounder, check. Baked potato eating on my lap while swerving through traffic, check. Only one place for it to go, out the window. It's just people are getting so lazy nowadays, and I think that getting kind of tied back into delivery here, it's just people's laziness. I think they just – they are just not accustomed to taking that extra 10 minutes to – and it's not even like – it's not like it gets there faster with Uber Eats or anything. It actually takes longer than for you just to get off your ass and go get it. Great point. Didn't even like, think about that. It's not a faster, you know, sublimation of getting food delivered to you and into your belly. Yeah. It actually probably takes three times as long, especially if it's longer than a couple miles away. Because I know they have time to prepare that food and wait for that driver to get there. Whereas if you call ahead and you say, hey, I'll be there whatever you tell me, it's always, you know, be here in 15 minutes, no matter how far away you are from the place. Like, should be here in 15 minutes, we'll be ready. So that's not even, like, laziness to be productive. That's just laziness to not leave the house. Like, damn, put on some shorts, put on a T-shirt, put on a hat, and get your ass down to the freaking restaurant. And it also gives you more control. Like, if, if nothing else that we're saying against delivery has convinced you, if you're still sitting there saying, no, delivery – is my choice it's i've had uber eats just cancel an order on me when they said it was arriving i was waiting 90 minutes and on the 90th minute and the whole time it was tracking it said hey it's it's being prepared you know uh joe in a toyota camry is on his way to get it and then just on that 90th minute it says your order could not be completed. Our sincerest apologies. I reached out to Uber Eats. I was like, hey, what the shit? And they said, oh, our bad. I was like, correct. They said, we will refund your orders. Yes, of course you'll refund my order. I didn't get food. There was no transaction here. I gave you money but didn't receive the product. Of course, that's not you doing something for me. That's just like me not raising concerns to the Better Business Bureau about you. And, but then I was like, so what, what's the deal with this? They said, oh, we can promise it won't happen again. I said, oh, thanks for that. Your word is clearly your bond. I took you at your word. My, my food was going to show up last time. And now I'm supposed to be like, oh, I bet it doesn't happen again. And I've also had delivery food where they just drop it off at another house. 
And then they have the balls to send me like the little, how was your delivery tonight? Like, not great. <laughs> not great, Bob. I'm showing up on my neighbor's ring cam taking something off their porch. I'm going to get on the next door app as some suspicious criminal because you couldn't figure out how numbers on the front of houses work. And so just none of it. And like you said, the time, the time. It's if you want something on a Friday night that's 15 minutes from your house, it Uber Eats will tell you it's going to be an hour, hour and a half. Minimum. Yeah, and then and then they're like, "Oh, sorry, we're running late. It's going to be another half hour without any notification, any heads up. It's just that that ticking line at the top. It's like, oh, extended another half hour. It's I I just don't get it. You're getting you're spending less money. You're getting it quicker, but the only thing that's holding you back is like, oh shit, I'm really gonna have to pause this episode of Emily in Paris, or else I'm not gonna be able to get there." I just turn on some music, a podcast, call an old friend, just vibe out in the car. I don't get it. The only there's only one excuse that I find acceptable with doing Uber Eats, and that is an extreme hangover. I'm not talking like, oh, went out, mm-hmm. had a couple of drinks with the guys. I'm talking like you were out till three, four in the morning. You've been on the couch for an hour and a half. Your headache hasn't cut out. If you get off the couch, you feel nauseous. That's the only time acceptable in this entire world life experience that you should be able to do uber eats you should have to have to blow into a breathalyzer attached to your phone to make sure that there's still some alcohol in your system so why you have to get uber eats yeah i if if i was ever in an elected office and was given um full dictator reign so i guess it's not elected if i'm ever appointed by a fascist regime who overtook democracy and they put me in charge um I would make it so that you're not, I would, I'd put what you just said into place and a Gatorade is, is $10. A big color of your choice Gatorade is $10, but is mandatory. Cause then if you're just getting dinner, you're just like, what the hell? I'm not going to like have low main with an orange Gatorade. I'm not a sociopath, but if you're hung over, you're just like, yeah, you know what? Actually that Gatorade would be great. Um, so th- th- thank you for that. So it would, it would ensure that we're getting it to the right people. And, will... and, and then there, you just put the markup on the Gatorade as their tip, so you don't feel like you're forced into tipping somebody. Did we just figure out Uber Eats? I think Did I'm the head of the regime. I think I think you're more qualified for this. Um, but I, I, I'm you're onto something with the hangover piece because when you're hungover and you're like on either head or stomach hangover or the dreaded combination where you're on the sofa, you know, time is just running slow throughout your day. You're deciding if it's worth it to stand up and go try to vomit. Uh, Hey, a shower sounds like a lot of work today. Like those kind of days. Yeah. Um, Money really isn't an object. No. And it's, it's sort of the same as airports, which I I'd like to age out of this one day, but I'm still, of the age where unless I'm traveling for work, if I'm at an airport for return flight, I am hungover. Yeah. Like I'm whatever was the last night, hey, it's our last night here. <laughs> or it's like the night of the event that you're there for, like a wedding or what have you. And so being at an airport already, money's kind of out the window. You're just like $15 for a Toblerone. That seems right. And if you're hungover at an airport, just trying to get home, like the other week, I was hung over at the Miami airport and we've gone into what my day was before that. Um, but I go to the airport and I'm like an hour and a half early for boarding somehow, some way. And I went and got a pizza and I was still hungry and still hung over after eating the pizza. And so like 20 minutes after that, I went into like a Panda Express knockoff and got a triple entree plate with fried rice. <laughs> <laughs> dude you spent 75 dollars on food at an airport you probably didn't even think about it you're just like swipe don't care like you said money is not an object when no you're absolutely not when i go out to dinner no matter if it's like not a nice place medium like medium realm or a nice place or an ultra nice place i i look at the check right when i get there and of course you have to for the tip and so forth i'm just like oh is this right like oh man i spent x amount of money uh it could have said 
three thousand dollars on that cash register and i wouldn't have noticed i don't care just get me this horrible food to make me feel better <sighs> yeah absolutely and then the only other i guess there's one other acceptable time is when you're drunk and you need that night food but mm. Yeah. I also am trying to age out of that myself where I shouldn't be eating when I get home from the bars. Like that's just a wasted, wasted meal right there. Yeah. Cause it's a ton of calories and you're going to just pass out. Yeah. yeah. And you're uh, hammered as hell. Like you're not going to be like, Oh, that was the best $4 or $45 order of IHOP I've ever had. Cause the only thing that's fucking open. You, you know, what's, what's a good, uh, drunk food compromise so that you're not spending money that you're not doing a ton of excess calories uh, like a frozen pizza as you know from my life experiences dangerous because you fall asleep you burn the house down uh, I didn't burn my house down to be clear but uh, ramen ramen you're not it doesn't cost much money it, it tastes great after you've been drinking if you forget about it it was 40 cents and it's in the microwave all live. Yeah. So I, I'm just I trying, that's, trying to help everyone out there. That, that works. I like that. I'm going to start loading up on ramen for junk food. Unagi. I've been doing uh, quesadillas. Mm, cooking a quesadilla? Food. Yeah. I mean, just in the microwave. Nothing crazy. <laughs> I want, there, there are a few things in this world that I want more than a video camera in the corner of your kitchen recording you at two in the morning <laughs> making a drunk ass case yeah because the, the the shirt is popped you're still wearing your pants and you're just like stabbing at it with the spatula it's it's a mess there's fucking cheese everywhere oh god the morning after waking up and just being like does a fucking mouse live here because there's just little cheese nibbles everywhere it's like, what the fuck did I do? It looks like I just took a bag and turned it upside down. Because I know at one point when you're drunk making that quesadilla, you get a little bored about it. You're just like casually flipping it, head on your hand. And then uh, there's a point where you forget about the quesadilla a bit. Like, oh, 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 better fold it. <laughs> and then I also know when you're done making it, you're just like whispering to yourself like, oh, this looks so good. Oh man, what a great! This is gonna be awesome. What a great case idea this is. You gotta hype yourself up. Come on now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> speaking of hyping yourself up, uh, I want to get to our weekly segment. Uh, is baseball ba back yet? So, Doc, is baseball back yet? Nope. Okay. Uh, so Aaron Rodgers is just continuing to piss the world off, and I have loved Aaron Rodgers. For as long as I can remember, I wanted my beloved Dolphins to draft him number two. Instead, they took running back Ronnie Brown. But remember the Wildcat. And, of course, he's made people mad about the vaccine stuff and all that, and we, we don't want to get into that. But he's – Packer fans have gotten, what, 30 years of consistent dominant quarterback play going from Brett Favre directly to Aaron Rodgers – but they've also, with those two guys, <laughs> dealt with like toxic relationship nonsense with each of them, where Brett Favre kept retiring, and then he had offensive linemen come down to Mississippi to like, hey, Brett, come back, and all this. And finally, the Packers like, listen, Brett, we love you. Of course, we'll, we'll always have that one Super Bowl and, and the one that you lost, but we can't do this anymore. <laughs> it, it was just exhausting. It was it's like when you're in a relationship and then it's like someone throwing plates against the wall. You're just like, all right, listen, no, you're very attractive. We've had some good times. We've been together for, for a little while, but I, I can't deal with the plates against the wall anymore. I mean, it's just a mess to clean up. And now Aaron Rodgers, after just ambiguous, vague, nonsensical trash last offseason, where is he going to get traded? Is he going to happen on draft night? How is he forced his way out? He's so mad about Jordan Love, on and on. And we thought that it was going to be, you know, just a reasonably clean break this offseason. And then he just goes quiet for a while and then posts, like, thank you so much for the memories. I'll always remember this. 
and thanks his fiance, ex fiance in the post and all this. He was just like, oh, it's everyone that he's leaving. And he did it right before going on his weekly Pat McAfee show appearance. And you're like, okay, this is it. He's going to tell us, I'm not going to play for the Packers next year, whatever. He's finally going to give us a definitive answer. It's not going to be the, well, I mean, you know, it's, I, who knows what's going to happen. And we're just waiting, seeing um, feelings were hurt. Who knows if they can be – like, no, it's he's finally going to say something. And then nothing. He said he was on a 12-day cleanse and it was the gratitude phase. Yes, he thought it <laughs> past tense the whole time. I just – I just can't do it. Aaron Rodgers is, I used to think he was a thinker. He was introspective. He was interesting. And now, and I still love his play on the field, but now I'm just starting to think he's America's crazy aunt. Like everyone has that crazy aunt where they're just like, Hey, aunt Betsy, how's it going? And it's just like, well, uh, have I told you about where the moons are today? Like, Oh fuck, here we go. It's going to be this. It's just, well, I saw this fascinating documentary on tree frogs. And tree frogs, if you think about their life cycle, it's very similar to ours. Like, um, I'm sure it is. Okay. Yep. Like where you're just trying to get out of the corner you're backed into. And that's who Aaron Rodgers is becoming. Where it's just, he's not saying anything. Nothing he's really doing or saying off the field is interesting. You're like, oh, what did he learn from the Dalai Lama? He learned nothing. He learned nothing at all. He says nothing. He just babbles on. He's he's the like the guy in your fraternity who decided to like take a philosophy course and he's two weeks into it. And now all of a sudden he thinks he's this ancient world's greatest philosopher because he took this 101 class. And you're just like, that's not you, man. I saw you shotgun Cobra, the bottle edition, in the back of the house the other day. And now you're trying to tell me the secrets to life. Get lost. Aaron Rodgers coming back from the Dalai Lama saying nothing. Oh, I go on this 12-day cleanse and I make this Instagram post that I know you are self-aware enough to know it is nonsense. And everyone's going to read it the exact same way. And then you're like, I don't know where everyone got that from, man. And I can't do it anymore. Just tell me where you're going to play or go elsewhere. I, I can't follow it any longer. I'm just no. going to read it out. I'm with you. He's uh I feel like he's like trying to start like a multi-level media, like just Ponzi scheme thing. He's just being so just contrite with everything. And I it, he might just be a mastermind, to be honest. I, I think he's just shaking up the bag to shake up the bag and see what people say. I'm 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 actually turning myself. I think I'm a fan of Aaron Rodgers for this mind game. I love a good mind game. Oh, it's <laughs> I I do love the idea that. Uh, he does in, after his career instead of just like traveling the world or or trying to better himself that he does become like a multi-level marketer like selling crystals yeah he's just like hey Devonte adams randall cobb aaron jones like hey can you come over to my house i'm having a dinner party like sure aaron sounds great it's like i bet you're wondering why i called you all here i want to talk to you about the healing powers of crystals now, this one here, the one that I gave you, Devontae, and I'll expect my, your Venmo for that, that is $180. But I have this set here that has everything you need complete. You want to live a restful, blissful life? You want the prosperity crystal? You can have all these for the low, low price of $700. But if you set up your own crystal party, which, guys, I mean, how fun is this? How fun? Yeah. We'd love to do this again. And We'll give it to you 20% off. But this isn't a company. It's a family. And it's a lifestyle. And he's just going to keep selling those crystals until he makes President's Club and is gifted a lime green PT cruiser. I actually uh, love that for his life. I'm back in on Aaron Rodgers if he goes that route. Well, he should go that route. But are crystals the new Tupperware? Like, isn't that the uh, the motif that all the sitcoms used to use that the stay-at-home mom would start selling Tupperware mm -hmm. to the neighborhood? It's is that what crystals are? It's skincare. Oh. Skincare is the one. Just watch it. You'll see it on social media. Uh, or it'll just be like, hey, I joined the, and it's some just horrible name. I joined the Labalug family. And Labalug, I never knew that I could be my own boss. 
that I could have the freedom to live my life, work-life balance, until I join the family. Do you want to join the family too? DM me. Or it'll just be like a really awkward selfie. It's like, I bet you're all wondering how I got these clean, clear pores. Well, if you're interested, let me tell you. Come DM me. You're, if you're listening to this in an audio medium, you're going you're gonna to want to watch the YouTube version um, because I've been remarkably expressive with my hands. I, I, feel like, um, I feel like that'll help you get the full picture. But it's, I, I honestly just don't care where he goes now. Just go to the Broncos. Fine. Go back to the Packers. Just if, if he goes to the Dolphins, I'll just say great and never listen to a press conference again that he's a part of. I just, I just can't do it. And I, I feel like I'm – all the people who are mad at Aaron Rodgers out there are mad at him for different reasons than me, but I'm going to hold true to this. I mean, I know you love Tua, but what if he was like, I want to go to Miami? They just put that out there. Would you, would you welcome into the family a la skincare? I mean, listen, South Florida is where middle-aged crazy people tend to migrate. Um, although it is, it's actually a little bit further north, typically. I mean, the craziest find their way to, like, the middle of Florida, like Orlando and Lakeland. I mean, my God. If, and I'm sorry if someone's listening in Lakeland, Florida. But if, if, if you grew up in Lakeland, great. If you had a great job opportunity that was – better than anything where you were fine but if you're like hey it's time for a fresh start let's let's leave uh kalamazoo where are we gonna go should we go to miami no <laughs> tampa no jacksonville st augustine of course not let's go to where it is hotter than the sun let's go to lakeland florida then I don't understand you. Or I, had a, you. I had a buddy from high school go to Lakeland for college. Went to what South. college is in Lakeland? I don't know. It's a D2 school. He went and played lax there until he transferred back up to the D.C. area. I can't imagine lacrosse in Florida is awesome. I can't either. Or it's just super awesome and it's just unheard of because, I don't know, you never know. But, yeah, I drove through Lakeland and my grandparents lived in Hines. I think it's Hines City, south of Orlando, also a terrible town. Uh, yeah, I've done my time there. It's it's not great. Unless you love golf and you're 85 years old and love the sun to warm up your joints. That's about all there is there. Have you ever driven through, like, the heart, like, a significant amount of time through the heart of Florida? Like, I've driven from St. Augustine to Fort Myers. Okay, so you have to cut across. This. Yeah, I yeah. Across the other way. I forget where I finally, like, turned west but I was maybe in Miami or Fort Lauderdale and then rode up to Gainesville. Yep. And the absolute craziest people <laughs> and craziest billboards I've ever seen in my life. I, I thought I was in American Horror Story. I, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if, if some clown with four fingers or 14 fingers was just going to pop out of the woods at any moment. But it is a wild existence and it's like a place nobody talks about i mean everybody's like oh midwest people they're crazy oh you know the the pacific northwest people they've got their own brand of craziness no takes the cake middle florida every time people um, need to start talking about it more middle florida's bonkers i i also would like to say that and my apologies to the people of maine i've met some crazy people in I, I this is also another place where I wasn't sure if it was just an incredibly lucid dream because I spent a couple days in Maine and I'm not kidding you in three different places, three different cities. So obviously I'm talking to different people. I asked for a restaurant recommendation in town and was told pizza hut. <laughs> what do I do with that? I'm just wanting I just want to hear like, oh, um, you know, Stevie's crabs, like five minutes up the road. Fantastic shellfish. But thank you. Lovely recommendation. Have a blessed day. But, Pizza Hut's the Beef O'Brady's of Maine. Dude, people in Maine love Pizza Hut. I, the first time it happened, I was just like, oh, that's kind of odd. The second time I ha it happened, I was like, Some, 
something's up. Kind of a weird coincidence. And then the third time, I was like, all right, someone's got to explain this to me. What is with, like, if is there a referral program in Maine where it's it's like when you used to read enough books to get a personal pan pizza from Pizza Hut when you were a kid? Is there some sort of referral program where you're just like, hey, who sent you here? Because obviously I didn't go to Pizza Hut any of the times. Uh, love a good stuffed crust pizza, but that's a wild work lunch. Um, but I, I, I don't get it. And I don't know. They're, they're crazy people. Uh, I mean, there's crazy people everywhere. It's just, they all kind of tend to move to Florida. It's like where they, where they have, uh, you remember like Facebook meetups when that was a thing yeah. Yeah. Where people were just like, I have a King Cavalier Spaniel. I do too. We should all meet up. And, uh, that's, that's kind of what crazy people do. They're just like, Hey, Pensacola, right? And everyone's like, yes. And they all go and be weird together. I love how Florida, each each section of Florida has different crazies too. Like you get the Pensacola panhandle weird people in, in Florida, and they are a completely different breed of even going over to the Jacksonville, kind of that northeastern section of Florida weird, which is completely different than South Miami weird or South Florida weird and Central Florida weird. That's that's a good point. And I, I do want it on the record that the smaller the town you're in, the the crazier the transplants are because if you are like there's there's some really like small hidden places where if if someone goes like hey tampa was great that time we visited i'm sure all our problems we have here will go away if we just move to tampa like fine tampa's tampa's terrific and like there's lots of opportunities there but someone who just like moves from cleveland to just I don't know, Alligator Alley City, Florida, population 900. And you're just like, okay, something's real off with you. They're just like, I just want my privacy. I want some acreage of swamp and I just want to be left alone. It's just like, okay, there's some weird stuff going on upstairs. All right, like that one guy that got lost in the Everglades from Everglades City, that story we covered a while ago. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I, Honestly, I think at one point in my life, I'm going to be moving to a small town in Florida. Let's just be honest. I'm getting crazy over here. <laughs> All right. So for our last story of the day, um, I want to talk about Tom Brady's new movie. Now, listen, Tom. I've talked a lot about relationships on this podcast, all of which are hypothetical and not from personal experience. But Tom is is just has a toxic relationship with the city of Atlanta. There are still flags up in the Northeast that say 28 to 3. There's bumper stickers 28 to 3, all denoting that Super Bowl. And now, what does Tom Brady do with his retirement? He's producing and acting in a new movie called 80 for Brady. Starring Lily Tomlin, Jane Fonda, Rita Marino, and Sally Field, about four women going on a road trip to see a Super Bowl, and not just any Super Bowl, the Falcons versus the Patriots Super Bowl. And it's like, come on, man, you you won seven of them, and you 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 just have to pick this one. And I don't want to admonish this movie too much. I mean. God help me, I'm never going to see it. Because <laughs> th- these are the type of my the, of movies that my mom will see a preview and it's like, that looks fun. Just four old ladies <laughs> going to a game together. Oh, I just, that looks like such a laugh. Um, there's, there's no way my mom doesn't see this movie uh, at some point. But uh, <laughs> the fact that like LeBron, when he started getting into media projects, was just like, all right. I'm going to do a barbershop discussion where athletes can say whatever they want, which then he weirdly enough tried to like sue, I think Nick Saban in Alabama because they had that. I was like, Oh yeah, that's, that's definitely an idea that solely belongs to you. Uh, Totally proprietary LeBron that guys talking freely in a barbershop. (laughs) And then it's like a Taco Tuesday take. Try to trademark Taco Tuesday. LeBron's crazy. Being outside, like people do things, LeBron. All right, I got an idea. What if you're a grocery store, right? And you're having a little issue clearing the shelves of a certain item. 
you do what I call a buy one, get one. Call a buy one. You get the one free. Whoa. Bogo, how did you know? I thought that was only inside my mind. <laughs> only I thought of that. LeBron James. And uh, Peyton Manning, what does he do with Omaha Productions? He goes and does the Manning cast. His, his brother has that show. Eli has a show. Peyton has his own show. Interesting stuff, normal stuff. Tom Brady just goes, hey, boomers need a road trip movie. <laughs> And that is insane to me. Like, we can take the fact that, like, okay, he won't stop attacking Atlanta over this horrible thing. That movie's going to do terribly locally. Oh, yeah. Um, other than my mom seeing it. My mom will see this movie. Bank on that. Um, when I tell her, she's going to be thrilled. I won't have to get her anything for Christmas. Um, but the fact that he's like, what can I do? I'm Tom Brady. Everyone thinks I'm cool. Everyone thinks I'm more relaxed now after I moved down to Florida. Hey, maybe I'll buy a portion of the Dolphins. We'll see about that. But first, <laughs> these 70 and 80-year-old women are going to get in a car and road trip to a Super Bowl that happened five years ago. The only scene that I would want to see from this movie is Tom Brady reenacting the Mean Joe Green Coca-Cola commercial from back in the 70s, where he's just coming out of the end of the game and these ladies are somehow in the tunnel, like unexpectedly, and he just throws them a couple of Cokes and says, yeah, you guys did it. You made it. No, Metamucils. <laughs> yeah, Metamucils. <laughs> By the way, obviously we don't know anything about this movie other than the premise. Uh, I can guarantee you one of these women has lost her husband. Uh, another is divorced and is looking for fun. Uh, one is the really fun, outgoing one. Oh, one, I know what the fourth one is. I know what the fourth one is. What? Bachelorette party for third marriage. No, no. <laughs> um, but they hit the, they need some of them need some convincing to hit the road. But then everyone's on board. They hit the road. Guess what? Car trouble. Yep. Even worse, whether it's the tow truck guy or the repair guy or the town they're in, it's not going to go according to plan. But then they'll get back on the road and they'll have a night staying in a hotel where it's just going to be uh, like a montage of music and fun and uh, maybe a pillow fight, maybe like painting nails, maybe reading books, get, telling old stories. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, but then a line's going to get crossed. Someone's going to say something that's going to take it a little too far. Marge, I'm glad you're finally having fun. It sure took you long enough. Well, what do you mean by that? And then it's awkward. Someone threatens to leave the road trip. You know what? I'm flying back to Newport News, okay? And, but nope, they keep on. They, they figure it out. They keep on going. There's more trials and tribulations. They get to the game. They get there. There's an issue with the tickets. We made it all this way and we're not going to get in? It's like the National Lampoon vacation. No question in my mind this happens. But they finally get in. They have that warm moment. And I, I do think something will happen. Like Tom Brady's going to be there. and He's not going to produce an act in this movie and not like have some role at the end where he's like, wow, you ladies really are special friends. Would you like my gloves? Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. This is amazing. It's like, well, wait till you see next year. End of movie. Roll credits. Opens the door for a stupid road trip sequel. Well, yeah. I, and like, you, I got close. When we actually get this movie out there, I guarantee you I'm close. Check you, should, you should outline a screenplay. Put it up. Be like, urgent. <laughs> For, for press release to all, here's Tom Brady's new outline. <laughs> you don't have to see it. If you listen to the last two minutes of me yelling, you just saw it. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> why would he do this for the first movie? I, I don't get it. And then to like Ocean's ate it too. I don't understand it. I, I don't know where he's trying to get it. Him? What? Maybe it's because they're close in age to him. I think Sally Field's like seventy three. I don't know. I mean, part of me thought like because they're all older you know, Hollywood icons. Maybe he was going to try to have them one play like the mom role, but then it's like, they would fly out. It wouldn't be a road trip. Like what is going on? I, I can't figure out this movie. I don't want to figure out this movie. I mean, you just broke it down in five minutes, scene for scene, basically. I would be shocked 
if if there's something that would shock us. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want him so bad just to completely rip off uh, National Lampoon's Vacation. Just scene for scene. Just remake that movie, but with these actors. No creativity, no ingenuity, nothing. Just scene for scene, the whole thing. Uh, I'm, I know it's a different uh, Lampoon or National Lampoon movie, but instead of shitters full, it's, hey, handicapped bathrooms full. Yeah. <laughs> They, oh, and then the other, like, monkey wrench that'll get thrown into everything is they randomly, like, go to some music festival in Tennessee on the way down because they took a wrong turn. They go to Bonnaroo on accident. <laughs> Instead of trying, like, hell to get the Christmas lights to work, it's going to be that same sort of effort and frustration to just get a phone charger plugged in. Oh, God. <laughs> to log on to something other than MapQuest because MapQuest is dead. Although it's not. I forgot. There's also going to be a really handsome older man that uh, there's like a spark with one of them at one of their stops. At the hotel in the pool. Oh, that could be. That could be maybe at a diner. They see him across. They're also. They're definitely going to stop at a diner at some point. Yeah, absolutely. And I bet you that waitress is sassy. Trust me. Oh, sassy kid too. Like. Completely opposite of the boomers, just straight up TikTok and doing the dances and all that shit. Like as their server. This kid isn't with them, it's four old ladies. No, as a server, not the kid. Uh, the server is like the opposite because whenever they do it in a movie, it's the young kids with the old lady yeah, that's always cranky. Yeah, they, gotta, right. they gotta flip it. I do love whenever there's a movie that you can tell it has like boomer actors and you can tell it's four boomers. There's always like some weird shot. At millennials and Gen Z and Gen X, which they think are all the same thing. <laughs> like, there was that movie, The Intern, with Robert De Niro and um, Anne Hathaway. Yeah. And in it, she was just like, you wear a suit to the office. He goes, oh, I always wear a suit to the office. I'm a little old school. I hope that's okay. She's like, no, I like it. People don't do that enough anymore. I was like, <laughs> they always give some line for what boomers can be in there. Like, that's what I've been saying. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, no, kids nowadays, they don't understand that you're not supposed to be on your phone at the table. <laughs> there will be something like that. Absolutely. It's just, I this movie is going to have like, you know, the you search a restaurant or something on Google and it gives you like the peak times. This peak time is going to be all matinee showing. Oh, that's a good call. They're not even going to have one. <laughs> just nothing past 5 p.m. because nobody's going to show up no, to see that. Absolutely not. And you know where it's going to do really well? Lakeland, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to do it for us today. Thank you, as always, for listening. You can check us out on Instagram at Spaghetti Juncture Boys on our website, sjbatlanta.com, on Instagram and Twitter at sjbatlanta. Check out Cut Bet on Twitter and Instagram at CutBet, shoot them a DM, get it going today, cut out the vague, the revolutionizing sports betting against the institutions. Make sure you get your money and get the most out of it. Thanks as always for listening, and we'll see you next week.